High in the Pennines lies Boundary Park, home of Oldham Athletic Football Club. They're not one of football's glamour teams, but in August 1992 they took their place in the new FA Premier League. That meant a share of £300 million from a satellite TV deal. Everyone else's second favourite club were in the big time. Close up North cameras followed Oldham through the first Premier League season. Could the bookies' favourites for relegation defy the odds? It's early doors to get too carried away, but um, there are signs taking place now you know, that we can be a, a fair side. Um, we're still one of the favourites for relegation, but we don't take too much notice from that. We just hope that the bookies are wrong. Early season optimism has begun to evaporate. The Latics are in the bottom third of the table. On a wet and windy Monday night, the visit of high-flying Norwich City attracts the cameras for a live match. Along with higher admission prices has come American-style pre-match entertainment. I think they're very good. Yes, I enjoy them. Uh, obviously, the good crowd, plenty of people coming. Uh, I don't think it stops people coming just because it's on the sky. I mean, it gives them a bit to look at, but you know, it's really a bit stupid, to be honest with you. <laughs> No, it's no, what matters, isn't it? The 90 minutes is what matters. What goes on before and after is just a, a farce, really, isn't it? You know what I mean? On top of an initial three quarters of a million, the club earns around £70,000 for each live Sky game. Some fans stay at home. For those who do brave the elements, Oldham always serves up excitement. 13 minutes gone. Oldham 2, Norwich 2. Deep into injury time, Norwich score the winner to go top of the table. Comes into challenge, but now it's Robbins in with a chance of a shot. Oh, it's there! Mark Robbins has scored a hat trick a mile away from where he used to live, and that is desperate for Oldham Athletic. Despite another defeat, morale among the players remains high. The manager knows all about the hard work that brings success. As a goal-scoring centre-forward, Joe Royal won a championship medal with Everton. After 11 years at Oldham, he's the league's longest-serving manager. We used to cater for 3,500 people here, now we have 12,000 average, near enough. Um, we have players earning wages here that I just would never have imagined. So the, the club has made such rapid, rapid strides in a short time, really, but it's changing all the time. First objective, stay up. We've got to stay up. We've got to stay in the Premier League and all the finance that goes with it. Um, we're one of the wannabes. We want to be up there. Unlike their big city neighbours, Oldham can't afford the millions needed to buy top players. So the search for fresh talent has led to Scandinavia. Gunnar Haller was signed after playing amateur football in Norway. <laughs> He didn't make anything, anything particular for Gunnar because he, he did speak English, uh, he did settle, settle down really quickly and as soon as he got his wife over here and his baby, well he's just accepted now as a player. Uh, the fact that he's Norwegian is incidentally, he's a, a Latix player. He still has problems, I mean he has problems because you will hear Geordies, Mancunians, um, Yorkshire, uh, all kinds of different dialects in the dressing room and, and I think sometimes he, he finds it hard but uh, now he's settled in the treat and uh, if there's any more like Gunnar will have him. Oldham's season though goes from bad to worse. After cup defeat at first division Cambridge, Royal describes the team performance as dire. Away from problems on the field, club chairman and chief executive Ian Stott is on his way to a London meeting of Premier League chairman. By now, attendances are down and TV audiences lower than predicted. I do believe the recession is the main reason for the falling off in the gates, not some of these peripheral things like the television that have been, uh, that have been mentioned. So it's, it's in a difficult state at the moment because a lot of people's forecasts and budgets have, uh, have gone wrong. Uh, I mean, we're, we're certainly a bit down ourselves and uh, it hasn't helped the general state of 
flow of money is round, round between the clubs, which is at the moment fairly stagnant. Well, I'm delighted to be unfashionable as long as I'm in it. I think our, our image and our awareness of, of Oldham has increased considerably over the last uh, three or four years. So I don't think we're as unknown as we were, but I'm happy to be unknown. Again, if you'd proffer your hand, are you not, are you not prepared to proffer your hand? There you are. So Mr Kelly of the uh, Football Association, which I'm sure you all know. Very important man in these proceedings today. This is off the cuff. This is off the cuff, but he's... No, no, no. no I've been with them all the whole morning, so... <laughs> they are from Manchester. Ah! Ah! Part of the world that Mr. Kelly knows very well. Why, why are they with you? Because they love me dearly and they've got nothing better to do. A controversial proposal to form a second Premier Division dominates the agenda. After brief discussion, it's thrown out. That leaves the chairman time to reflect on his club's philosophy. I think we are good enough. Uh, I think we do play the right sort of football uh, to be able to get out of it. Um, it may be that we're just not nasty enough. Um, and one hesitates to say that. I mean, I, I don't like the idea of being that, but I, I just sometimes wonder whether we, we are too football conscious. I think we've got the capability and the resilience. We've come back from two goals down in many games in the past, uh, so we can come back from being in the bottom three at the moment. So I, I don't see us being doing anything very dramatic, but I think it will be just enough. I first of all welcome you all along to Boundary Park for this afternoon's Premier League game against Tottenham Hotspur. And a particularly warm welcome to our match sponsors this afternoon. OMC Ford Oldham and Wilmill Print and Design from Cradley Heath. Welcome to Boundary Park. I'm sure everybody will have an enjoyable afternoon with us here and let's hope for the right result at the end of the day. We're just about ready to serve lunch. If you could make your way to... Another Saturday, another three points. But there's big money to be made as well. Corporate hospitality is now a vital part of all sporting events. But it hasn't always been like that. Match sponsorship on, uh, on a match day uh, 11 years ago was, was for eight people and they got a plate of sandwiches at half time and a cup of tea. Uh, now we're talking about a four course meal uh, served with wine, complimentary bar facilities and so forth. Completely different operation to 11 years ago. Football is a major business and it certainly um, made you when you're in the Premier League. Um, every football club has got to be run as a business and there's a tight ship and you've got to make the best of your opportunities. Those commercial opportunities include a souvenir shop, plus a unique travel agency, where fans can book a close season holiday. But putting Boundary Park in the same league as Old Trafford or Anfield depends on cash coming in. It's all down to success on the field at the end of the day in relation to your average gates and how successful the shop is and so forth. Obviously, the better you're doing in the league, the more interest there is through the shop and through sponsorship and so forth. It all revolves around the team. After only one win in eight games, the team needs to beat Tottenham. They win 2-1 with a last-minute goal. The Junior Latics Christmas Party. 350 young Oldham fans out to enjoy themselves. A 5-2 defeat at Wimbledon has failed to put a damper on the festivities. It's delightful to see you all here. I must tell you, there's more of you here than there were at Wimbledon last Saturday. And I certainly hope you enjoy yourselves more than most of us did on that particular occasion. Now, you're going to say, why should I enjoy Christmas? The answer is, you should thoroughly enjoy it. Forget what is happening just at the moment. We're having a little bad spell. No problems. We've had bad spells before. But the most important thing is that you continue to come and support us because, quite honestly, we are worth supporting, I promise you. And please have a thoroughly good time tonight and over the next few days. Thank you for your support and enjoy yourselves. Good night. And any junior athletics function, players turn up to sign autographs, play games, generally get involved. The Christmas do is one where all the players turn up. 
Hence you see the activity behind me tonight where there are 16, 20 players here and all these kids want their autographs. Or indeed some of the mums and dads want their autographs as well. A successful run in the FA Cup is crucial, but Oldham lose 3-0 in a replay at Tranmere, again a lower division club. The season is now a straightforward fight for Premier League survival. However well or poorly the team is performing, safety on a match day is paramount. Today's visitors are Blackburn Rovers and the fixture is an all-ticket match. The visiting fans will be in this section here, the 3,000 seats. Occupying now, the large section of the Rochdale Road stand and the information from the police, apart from the fact that all the tickets have been sold, they have this tendency to want to stand on the seats. And the the current trend the amongst the supporters is that they drink heavily before the game. Now if you're on turnstiles it only means you've got to pay more attention to people coming in either with beer or having had it or looking as though they're drunk. They're not allowed in. And can so sit wherever the fancy takes them. Now then, the last match was Oldham Athletic versus Trammy Rovers and we had untold problems with people blocking gangways and causing obstruction. I've been telling you to let the stewards get on with the job. Let them have the first crack at sorting it out. And that's what I want you to continue to do. But at the last match, apparently a steward asked an officer for assistance and he didn't get it. He was told by the officer, that's your job. Now, you're both here, stewards and police. Above all, Oldham is a family club. Eight-year-old Stephen Clegg prepares to make his debut as team mascot. He was enrolled as a junior latic when he was born. How are you? Hope you enjoy your day. And this is Tony. Hello, Tony. Hope you enjoy your day. What's the biggest scare you've refereed? Uh, the biggest game, well, have been few. The one I really enjoyed was this season, was Sheffield Wednesday against Manchester United, which was a one hell of a game. What's your favourite play player? I haven't got any favourite player. The, the players, I mean, people I support is referees, the men in black or green, whatever the case is. Sitting in the seat stand, which is Clive and Shane Hilton, Blackburn Rovers supporters. They're in the Road and all the best on their recent marriage. As the match gets underway, the security operation goes into full swing. There's some hostility there in the void. Being a black one, six. One in the white jacket. Shown on three, yeah. All eyes are on the crowd. For Stuart Christine Rimmer, match days have become a family affair. I saw an advert in the paper um, asking for female stewards. And I thought, well, being as the rest of the family's out, I may as well be out earning some spending money. So I started here two seasons ago and um, thoroughly enjoyed myself. Um, um, from there, the eldest boy now, he comes and stewards, and I steward, and my husband and youngest son sit up in the stand and watch the games. This has always been what I'd call a family club, and we've little or no trouble here, really. But the main change is that I think the general behaviour of fans has improved, and of course we've got to try to scale down policing operations, because we are quite a costly force to the club. In fact, Oldham's policing bill for a season is a quarter of a million pounds. So stewards are being trained to take the place of police officers. Once the match has started, then obviously you're looking for areas in the ground where there may be problems, whether or not everybody who is here on duty is doing what they're supposed to be doing, or whether or not um, if they feel there's going to be problems somewhere, they should move more stewards into a different area or move police into a different area. I like watching television anyway, so it's, it's no problem really. Uh, it's just a case of trying to keep your eyes on, on all the screens and, and then if any problems occur, it's concentrating on that one area. The stewards are more professional than they were before, they're more confident and gradually, I think everybody would like to see, I certainly would, I'd like to see the police move out of football in the way that we do it now and let the stadium be controlled by the stewarding operation. Control is lacking though in Oldham's performance. Blackburn score the only goal of the game. 
Ten days later, another local derby against Manchester City, and the season is fast turning into a crisis. Players can play as good as what they can do. We should do really, you know, we should get out of it. But it's just getting out of it. You're getting a rut, and we're just stuck in a rut at the moment. We're having no luck at all. There's no easy games. A win tonight, a draw on Saturday best we can ask for, but we need them. My own personal opinion is uh, some of the players are lacking a bit of art. You know, you go to away matches and they just... The detraction of another nail-biting 90 minutes means another big crowd. Then, in the dying minutes, City score. I'll put it out. It's the 10th, isn't it? No, 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 no. No, sorry, no, they're covered in smoke. <laughs> Things don't change. Lucky there's only one, weren't we? Yeah. <laughs> that was quite typical. I think you see the fine line between the top and the bottom there today, you know, that. We've not done a lot wrong, uh, but a break at the final time, you know, at a crucial time. And that's just the way it's going at the moment, but it'll change. We've got 18 games to turn it around and it'll, it'll change. I, I still don't feel we should be in this position, but we are. You know, it, it's been a could have and should have season. And I felt... Uh, I've seen penalties given for less than... And it only was clear and blatantly pulled back. And both the linesman and the referee are looking at it and don't see it, you know, and they're the things that go against you mm. when you're down the bottom. Yeah. But that's the way it goes. See you, gents. Cheers, yeah, right. Thank you. Thank you. Now, bottom of the league, the fates conspire against the Latics. At one stage, nine first teamers are out injured. Physiotherapist Ian Liversidge is treating some of them three times a day. Paul Bernard's been out for nearly two weeks now with uh, with this. It, it, it started as a kick. Um, it developed into a strain. Uh, I'll be asking Paul to step up his training next week with a view to be playing again next weekend. And uh, it's very, very important. So, I mean, I, I know that my role here is in, to, to get the players out fit. It's no good if I get the players out and after half an hour they're limping off again. That's no good to, to the club, it's no good to the boss, it's, it's no good to the player and it's certainly no good to me. Injury hasn't helped Andy Barlow in his quest to play. After nine years at Oldham, he was dropped at the start of the season and has had more time at home. Andy feels though the club has paid a price for success. It's, it is a bit sad since we have gone in the Premier League, things have gone really big, that you tend to lose that, um, that smallness that the club had. The club had to leap one step ahead, and so obviously that slight um, that tightness, that affinity that you had with the fans, it seemed to disappear slightly. The pressure's building up on the club now, and obviously it builds up on yourself, I mean, myself as well, because I want to be fit, I want to get out there and do my bit, I want to help the club. You, say, you sit on the touchline every week and you're just watching week in, week out, you watch us lose, gain a point here and there, and then you come home on a Saturday afternoon and you put the results on, and you see that all the results have gone against you as well. The mood generally is one of nobody's letting us down. Uh, we, we, we've got to try and get through this little run of bad luck in, in terms of injuries and bad luck on, on, on things that are happening on the pitch, get a result under our belt and, and, and let's go, and, and there is still a belief uh, no doubt about that, that, uh, that we can pull away from this situation. If things are still going somewhat against us, 
I would be quite happy for it to go to the last game of the season um, because it means we're still in with a shout. Still bottom, and it's 19 years since Latix beat championship favourites Manchester United. But 45 minutes before kick-off, Secretary Terry Cale has other problems. 50, about 50 to 60 forged tickets. They just nailed the man. We spotted, we spotted a forgery, um, and we warned all the turnstile operators. They've actually picked the man up with five forged tickets. The, the fact that he's got about 400 quid on him looks like he's the man. The game is guaranteed to attract Oldham's biggest crowd of the season, 17,000. PA, will you announce, will you make an announcement that the kickoff is to be delayed by a quarter of an hour? Okay, sir. Thank you. Thanks, sir. All right, so, so you, you've, you've squared it with the referee? Yeah, and, and uh, good uh, to Joe. Joe. Thank you, so he's told you that. It's a crucial match for both teams, and their loyal fans know it. Then, halfway through the first half, as the game nears its end, tension on the touchline mounts. I thought they were terrific tonight. I mean, it wasn't... It wasn't the halcyon days of free-flowing Oldham Cavalier going forward and banging here, there and everywhere. It was perhaps a sensible attitude that we'll need to pull us out of our prison. Six days left, three games to go, three wins needed. At stake, hundreds of thousands of pounds that will disappear if Oldham are relegated. The first hurdle couldn't be tougher away at title hopefuls Aston Villa. Oh, absolutely brilliant today. Yeah, really fought for it. Played great. They'd played like that all season, they'd been nowhere near the bottom. Everybody was on the edge of the seats and stood up all the time and everything. It was yeah. nerve-wracking. Holding us breath, I kept hiding my face because I thought they're down again. And they're going to score. You get that feeling with Latics it. because they leave you on a knife edge right to the very end. Three days later, victory over Liverpool for the first time in 70 years. The final 90 minutes. Latix must beat Southampton. Fellow strugglers Crystal Palace must lose. Surely it's too much to ask. It's been definitely worth it. We've done the business again, but we can't do it the easy way. We've got to do it the hard way, haven't we? But it makes for entertainment, doesn't it? Oh, chuffed, yeah, chuffed to mint balls. We've done great this season, yeah. Who did it was good for this one? Great emotion, certainly the, the most emotional I've ever felt at a football match in my whole career as, as either a player or a manager. The greatest achievement um, in 11 years at Oldham Athletic, us staying up this year, is comfortably the, the greatest achievement. You know, it all came down after 46 games, it's all down to 10 minutes at the end. It's, it's absurd. I've just booked a room in intensive care um, for, for tomorrow. Uh, I, personally, actually, I, I, don't get terribly, I don't get terribly excited. I was manhandled a bit today by people around me who insisted that I stood up when we scored, which is a thing I don't normally do. I was dragged to my feet and kissed by all sorts of people I shall not normally wish to be kissed by. It was, it was a relief, really. I think one just sort of sank down and said, well, it's all over. Is it going to be like this again next year?
Something hopefully it won't be. <laughs> Even in the bad times, the supporters never got cynical. Even in the bad times, there was never a question in the boardroom. And even in the bad times, we never stopped believing that we could do it. Oldham, Oldham supporters have never had this. It's like, it's like winning the pools, if you like. The Oldham supporters never saw, thought they'd see the Premier Division or the First Division. And they're seeing it now, and they love it. Too exciting, by far. It would, it would be nice sometimes if it was a little bit more mundane, but uh, it wouldn't be old. So half time approaching here at Foundry Park, and 1 uh, 1 the score ball headed though towards the end of the box. Ian Olney's still got it, moves into the 